their attacks. It has been rumored Gon Industries has something to do with it. Gon Industries, the secretive organization behind the recent Argon successes on the front lines, has gone silent. While their troops hold the front lines against the Holy Order of Pontifex, they have fallen deathly silent within the current skirmishes with the Terran. It is unfortunate to think that Gon Industries can ghost so many that rely on them. Yes, they are still present, but it's almost in a comatose state, like they're focused elsewhere. Do the Argon and Antigon mean so little to them? And what have they been up to? And where is Gon Industries? Where is Gon Industries? And where is Gon Industries? Deep in the depths of Terran space, Gon Industries was quietly at work. While Gon Industries may look collected and put together on the outside, they were pushing forward in a panicked manner. They had seen how easily a war could break out between the Argon Federation and the Terran Protectorate. A single bad round or a misplaced shot could be all it took to light the dry kindling between the Argon and the Terran. And without proper care and preparation, a wildfire of a war could break out between the two. Gun Industries was attempting to cultivate a relationship with the Terran Protectorate. If the two factions grew in favorability, perhaps a growing sense of camaraderie and understanding would also become present, leading, as Gun Industries was hoping, to a sense of perception and even discernment. The best way to do this was for Gon to volunteer manpower to the Terran Protectorate's soul-born militia, a force filled with volunteer members, including even foreign auxiliaries, willing to fight with and for the Terran Protectorate. Not only would this allow Gon the chance to gain a relationship with the Terran, but even allow for a close, personal lesson on how they operated and conducted themselves. Things with the Terran were slow, however, and intel about them was even slower. Our ship that was assigned to the militia was put on escort duty. The only intel that came from that was the Terran were dealing with Xenon deep within their territories, which was not surprising. This was a common problem for most in these trying times. But it soon became more apparent. This was a commonality. The Terran Protectorate were in a constant state of Xenon attacks. But the most surprising part was the Terran were unsure how they were getting so deep into their territory. It was the norm for the Terran Protectorate to have to deal with a Xenon strike force a few systems deep into their territory and not know how they got there. It was almost as if the Xenon were acting differently in how they attacked the Terran than the rest of us. Another eye-opening piece of intel was received when an incident took place between the Terran Protectorate and the Antigone Republic. When an Antigone mining ship almost wandered into a Terran Protectorate minefield, the Terran Protectorate ordered its militia ships to fire upon the mining ship engines, disabling them, in order to prevent the Antigone ship from being destroyed. A truly telling moment on how the Terran Protectorate operated. They did not want the Antigone ship to be destroyed in their minefield and cause a diplomatic mess. However, they were willing to do what was necessary in their minds to stop the ship from falling into that predicament. The Terran Protectorate even admitted to how others outside their organization might not understand their tactics and willingness to do what must be done, so they weren't blind to their tactics being unorthodox or extreme in manner, which is very enlightening. This incident could shed light on the possible reason for the recent Argon and Terran skirmishes and has been passed down to Gon's strategist in Upper Brass. Yaki ship was an individual 
Bible scanners identified as Obelisk Ikingami. No records of him was found in our network. However, before I was able to do more digging, my wingman, Haley Shinamon, dropped off of radar and went missing. All communications with him was lost as well, presumably jammed by this Obelisk character. I was unable to search the area properly before all comms were interrupted by a strange signal noted earlier being played through it. A sample recording here will be noted. I was then recalled back to Gitsufu to help the Terran Soulborn militia fight off a system wide attack from the Xenon, suspiciously moving in after the signal was activated. Battle report to be submitted at a later date. Respectfully submitted. Captain. This was all troubling news. However, all it did was muddy Gond Industries' goals to finding a way to create a peace between the Terran Protectorate and the Argon Federation. Our hands were tied, however, with the Argon and the Terran staring each other down, and we had to push forward before a war inevitably broke out. A few things had become clear. The Terran Protectorate were a goal-centered group focused in on accomplishing said goals no matter the cost. They were extremist in their search to destroy in and all Xenon. They also did not want war with the Argon, or at least openly. They also toyed with the ideas of sabotaging the other factions, especially the Antigone and the Argon, to destable their positions in the galaxy and weaken them. We had to be cautious with the Terran. They were exceedingly dangerous, but for now, we had to keep playing their games. We were able to continue following the only lead we had on the Xenon attacks, the Yaki signal. Knowing we would have to be dealing with more Xenon, I deemed it necessary to allow the expeditionary fleet Osiris to take the lead on the investigation. They were able to track the signal this time to near Saturn. As suspected, another Xenon strike group was gathered around the signal point. After dismantling them with the help of Terran support, the expeditionary fleet continued to follow the trail, this time hitting to another signal lead near Uranus. The pressure to wrap things up with the Terran were building up, not just because of the potential war with the Terran, but because of the war with the Holy Order was still raging. The 1st and 2nd fleet were stationed in 2nd contact Flashpoint 2, holding the lines with the Argon and the Antigone. However, we were under a constant assault from the Holy Order space. The Holy Order were desperate to get another foothold in the system, and because of this, we were taking a lot of losses. The fighter squadrons of the second fleet were being hit the hardest, and I found myself constantly needing to build new fighter groups to reinforce second fleet and supplement their losses. But with my focus elsewhere and the war continually raging, assembly lines were running low on supplies, and reinforcements were trickling out slower and slower. On top of it all, the Argon Federation were on high alert, sucking supplies into their own fleets, which lumbered defensively around the southern jump gates to Argon Prime. 
The Argon were preparing for an attack, and that made Gon Industry highly worried because of their proximity and relationship with the Argon. If the Argon were pushed into a war, Gon Industries would inevitably be sucked in as well. And that was something we were not prepared for. As the expeditionary fleet continued to meet more and more contact with the Xenon, it was determined that the anti-pirate task force would be assigned to the Yaki situation as well to support. Their ability to attack small and agile craft would be paramount in dealing with the constant numbers of the Xenon. After following a trail of ships reporting sightings of Yaki ships and getting reports from a trading ship that a Yaki ship had held them up and told them to drop their goods but did not take anything which was of course known as strange behavior, our fleet was able to catch this Yaki ship in the act of doing the same to a Cigars Pioneer mining ship in orbit around Neptune. Our suspicions were confirmed that this was the Yaki ship we had been tracking when the Yaki, Obelisk, Ikigami, again used the reported signal to summon more Xenon to support him. We could not allow him to escape or go on the run again. We had to end this here and now. With the combined power of the Expeditionary Fleet Anti-Pirate Task Force and the Cigars Pioneer Mining Vessel, our forces were proud to report that Obelisk Ikigami ship was destroyed. This was still just one piece of the puzzle solved. How this Yaki was able to summon Xenon and what he was after was still a mystery. So when the mining ship hinted at having some answers and beckoned us to follow it to a nearby station, we had to follow. Back on the front of Second Contact, our scouts were able to locate another congregation of Holy Order stations, this time nestled far above within the system. The system was immediately set upon by Gon Industries and an Argon Strike Group. Needless to say, the station fell. Back with the Expeditionary Fleet and Anti-Pirate Task Force, our forces had followed the Cigar's Pioneer Mining Vessel to the Cigar Station. Once there, we were told to go and talk to a customs officer, which we complied with. The custom officer was polite, however. When we mentioned our recent interactions with the Yaki Obelisk Ikigami and his ultimate fate, her demeanor changed. She seemed almost saddened and taken back by the news, which hinted at a possible personal relationship with this Yaki, but no other information was given by her. After digging around and interviewing others on the station, it was confirmed that she and this obelisk had been seen together previously. Once our operatives had this info and attempted to find the custom officer to question her further, it was discovered that she had fled the station. She was spotted headed to a nearby asteroid that seemed to have some sort of structure on it. Our forces in the area quickly jumped into action to pursue her. After a short pursuit, our forces were able to surround the fleeing custom officer near this asteroid, and using the knowledge that she had been close to this obelisk character, we were able to create a dialogue with her and convince her to help us. She admitted, at one point, being very close to this obelisk, however, had left that lifestyle, including obelisk, behind. Obelisk had taken it hard and had sought her out and had told her about a new piece of cyberware he had built out of Terran high tech. He had given it to her in hopes that it would convince her to come back to him. She kept the cyberware despite not returning. Obelisk was so far gone from the person she once knew, out of him implanting himself with so much experimental tech, losing himself along the way. The custom officer then gave us the tech Obelisk had given her, stating for us to see where it would lead us. Our forces then released her. The item seemed to be some sort of advanced cybernetic made by Obelisk. It happened to also match the signal coming from the nearby asteroid, so a small vessel was sent in to investigate. A Yaki ship, belonging to the custom officer. Not only did this confirm that she was close to Obelisk, but also actually confirmed that she had at once been Yaki. The question was now, what do we do with this tech? 
and the newly found Yaki ship. Give it to the Terran Protectorate to finish our mission with them. Or seize it for our own research. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a long time. I've been... <laughs> I've missed you guys, honestly. But it's nice to just jump right back into it where I left off. Luckily, the Terran incident from the last episode was minor. And I say minor because it <clears throat> didn't lead to an all-out war. But they still managed to wipe out a quarter of our system effortlessly. Which makes me extremely nervous on how to deal with them. Gone Industries cannot afford another war right now. Well, especially dealing with the Holy Order and the Xenon and the, the Cock and all that stuff. It's just, it's something that we just cannot do right now. So if anyone has any suggestions on how to prevent a war between the Argon and Terran Protectorate, please let me know down below. I also want to thank my patrons. You, you see, you honestly, you stuck with me through my absence, and that means so much to me, so thank you. Gone Frigate Officer Juha Braz, your frigate, the RCHF Neutrophil, was part of the Anti Pirate Task Force and supported us in our Yaki investigation, was paramount in that operation. Gone Frigate Officer Jesse Luis Fravella, your frigate, the little lady, has been part of the First Fleet and has been fighting desperately to hold back the Holy Order on the front line, so it just. They're just kicking trash. <laughs> it's just doing doing God's work. Gone fighter pilot Dulcina. Your fighter, the Romulus, has been part of the second fleet on the front versus the Holy Order, and it was actually almost destroyed. So I actually had to upgrade it to a heavy fighter from a light fighter in order to keep it from not getting picked off. So it's it's been a beast. It's been fighting. Gone fighter pilot Peter, your fighter, the Descending Fury, was part of the uh, ex expeditionary fleet. It was actually the fighter that was used to find the Yaki ship within the asteroid. So thank you again to all of you. Thank you again, and if you're interested in joining this story and you want to be part of it, make sure to check out my Patreon. Link should be down below, I hope. I have a Discord link down below as well if you're wanting to play some Arma with us. We do Arma Ops every Saturday. It's We're going to be doing a spooky uh, Halloween one this 30th. Um, join us if you want more details come and check out the discord you should be able to find ask some questions or even just come to hang out either way i appreciate it i'm uh, officially back in the saddle after a long hiatus my work situation has finally made it so i can make videos on a regular basis so thank you again sub if you're interested like if you liked it dislike if you didn't either way i'm just grateful you came to hang out the world is crazy out there so be patient with one another and remember we are all brothers and sisters be kind love one another in peace